In The Sims, quitting your job and pursuing a creative passion for a living is an exciting adventure. But is it possible to survive living off the sales of your paintings alone? And what if you began the game as a starving artist without a dollar to his name? I decided to put this idea to the test. Every sim has a set of skills. Body, creativity, cooking, logic, mechanical, and charisma. Some of them help with career tracks. Others improve the quality of meals. And some of them, like creativity, can be used to actually earn money from household objects outside of the working world. For example, a sim who's good in mechanical skill can craft garden gnomes and sell those. Or the subject of today's test, a really creative sim can stay home from work and earn money by painting all day, then selling the paintings instead of showing up to a job. Meet Jebediah Dingleberry, hopeful artist, embarking on his exciting journey without a dollar to his name. His only possession? A single easel. When you start off with your sim, all stats are zero. Your needs are met. It takes about half a day of labor to finish a painting, during which time you gain artistic skill. It seems like killing two birds with one stone if it weren't for the fact that the first painting sells for zero dollars because we had no creative skill to begin with. After a full day's work, 24 hours, we sell our second painting for three simoleons, but still not enough to survive by any means. Life is tough, and artists who are unable to entertain anyone have it even tougher. Unfortunately, this means that Jebediah will inevitably die of starvation. The rules of this challenge are one, no jobs allowed, and two, no spamming the genie lamp because it makes the game too easy. Fortunately, for every new resident, a magic man delivers some supplies worth a bit of money. Combining this with the vast $3 profits we earn from our paintings, we renovate our home and prepare to meet death bravely. Although this generation of Jebediah I couldn't survive on art alone, what if Jebediah Dingleberry had left behind an heir? Meet Jebediah Dingleberry II, almost exactly the same as Jebediah Dingleberry I, suspenders and all. Perhaps aside from the new and unique selection of hat, picking up right where his father left off, let's see if Jeb II can outpace his father in the economic rat race and achieve his own version of the so-called American dream, move out from his present state of living into a slightly less bad one, ready to hand it off like a baton to the next generation. Unfortunately. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and what started out with the best intentions quickly devolves into repetition of his father's mistakes. Jeb II, motivated by his father's grave which he keeps beside his hand-me-down easel as a reminder of what will probably become of him, too, paints only a little better than his father and is still stuck in the economic trap inherited from his dad. But there's a silver lining. We can keep relying on the fact that we get a free delivery of magical furniture every time a new generation inherits the property. So although Jeb II will also die, he too will pass down a couple hundred more dollars worth of furniture to his own heir. So it continues, and maybe you can feel it deep in your own bones too, that timeless struggle to become better, to build on the foundation your own father left for you, and your father's father, and your father's father's father. You know how this story goes. Jeb the Third's life was brief and regrettable, but not as brief and regrettable as his dad's. And with every line, there's always that strain of hope that somehow keeps it together. Like 50 Cent once said, get rich or die trying. So the generations pass. If we cannot evolve by passing down our genes, we can at least pass down the material wealth to our children adding foundational meaning to an otherwise bleak existence punctuated only by the creation of several mediocre paintings. Jeb III is haunted by his ghostly ancestor's apparitions, eating into his dreams and stirring him from an already tumultuous slumber. It's not long before he joins his ancestors in an insignificant tomb. Jeb IV wears a hard hat to shield himself from economic adversity and trades out the grill for a fridge and a shower. After good fortune from winning the lotto, you'd think that would be enough to meet all his needs, right? Wrong. Garden flamingos make for poor conversationalists, and Jeb IV also dies of loneliness and starvation, albeit with more than his father started off. But at least Jeb V has a chance. No surprises here, a valiant effort. And mind you that I'm now in my fifth sim in a chain of people 
who are unable to feed themselves through art and take their supper with the graves of deceased relatives for social companionship. But at the very least, Jeb V was the final nail in the coffin, pun intended. He achieved fancy living and set the last foundations needed for the generation that would ultimately put it all together, Jebediah Dingleberry VI. It all comes down to this. Finally, a descendant of five generations of Dingleberries who has a leg up on the competition. And Jeb the Sixth has something his ancestor didn't have. Man's best friend. Social companionship that will help him leap where his forefathers fell. It's not long before he's creating works of art selling in the two and three digit price range. Though haunted by multiple poltergeists, he remains focused on his tasks and his work doesn't suffer when his house is in disrepair. A blessed man. Jeb the Sixth uses this to achieve maximum creativity, a feat unparalleled by any of his ancestors. And he uses this to make over 300 simoleons a day. No easy feat. But how would he make up for his ancestors' sacrifice and restore the family name? Or would his ancestors' unexpiated tears be forgotten, only for their gray hairs to wither and be lost down in the underworld? And so it was on that day that I embarked on a quest. The only way to valiantly restore our fortunes would be to find a wife and have offspring as numerous as the sands on the beach or the stars in the sky and exploit them for their creative labor to obtain unfathomable riches justifying the expense paid by my ancestors with their lifeblood. Fiesta time. I threw a party as a ruse to woo the local women, and how I did swoop among them, and how. There was Persephone Slagathor, or Tiffany Burb, both attractive, but veteran boars lacking in cosmopolitan substance. I cooked and I hosted, and I searched and I searched until it was love at first sight. Cassandra blew it. Was it her executive sunglasses or her sharp chrome plastic hairdo? Whatever it was, she was hot. Instant wife material. Well, I'm lying. It actually took four in-game weeks of constantly inviting her over, doting after her needs because people in The Sims 1 were needy. But let me tell you, that month flew by like a minute. It wasn't long before I popped the question five times because she kept refusing, and eventually she agreed. One time is all you need, and we hit it off splendidly like two peas in a pod. The bride came with a sizable dowry that added to my painting commissions. But did she know I was secretly using her to create an army of young artists, rivaled only by the tragically short careers of 90s child actors, to avenge the deaths of my ancestors and prove that artists could make money from nothing? Time would tell. Baby time. Kissing, kissing, kissing. When a mom and a dad love each other very much, and the dad wants to abuse the family unit to force his children to paint and earn money, a baby is made. Young Dingleberry. I took care of the child. And for three days, I boxed out child protective services whenever they attempted to confiscate my infant. I know this is getting really convoluted, but I wanted to find out if there was any feasible way to earn a lot of money. And I'm talking a lot of money in The Sims, from art alone. We're not talking about just getting by, we're talking about abundant wealth. Even if that means I need to raise eight children and lie to them about how much I love them while subtly brainwashing them into becoming artists. So, seemingly overnight, my role changed from artist to manager. Why waste my time painting when I could train other painters to do my work for me? It's basic leverage, folks. Simply raise one child, then train the first child to raise the next child you have for you. Soon, like a developing country, we were rolling in kids, raising other kids, all the while somehow possessing savant-like genius in their artistic ability, able to fetch hundreds of simoleons for their creative work, further solidifying my income and making me a magnate an emperor in his own right. But at the same time, it wasn't easy. I had to keep my offspring penned in and prevent them from failing out of school or joining the military, or even just deal with the nuisance of Sonny, the tragic clown, a strange and dystopian entertainer who makes you the opposite of happy. Anyway, it was getting to be a bit much, I have to say, and I thought I had proven my point. The answer is yes. 
You can definitely make a lot of money in The Sims as an artist without a boss, but you'll probably go on a roller coaster of death and sadness and sacrifice at least a few of your ancestors laying down a foundation or inherit a small nest egg from which to start. But if you play your cards right, maybe you'll just meet that special someone and then it's off to the loony bin with you. Well, I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. A special thanks to my patrons who are in the loony bin right now and I'm going to join them. Until next time.